a plantation is the oddest thing Americans treasure. Yes, it's a beautiful building. Yes, it's part of American history. But it's part of the evils of American history. When I hear plantations, I automatically think of slaves. And I think of the historical torment that came with slavery. I think of misery. I think of dehumanization. I think of a time when we claimed that it was all okay. Plantations might be interesting historically, but it's painful overall. However, there's a great Twilight Zone episode that discusses the issues of remembering. How we need images and reminders, like a plantation, to remember the fallacy of man. We need these tokens as a reminder of things we cannot go back to. We need them to teach us the importance of moral evolution. For those that don't know what episode I am talking about, I am talking about Death's Head Revisited, in which a former Nazi comes back to the concentration camp he worked at and is haunted by the people he tortured. The Myrtle's Plantation was built in 1796 by General David Bradford. It was built on his 600 acres called Laurel Grove. He was quite famous for his role on the Whiskey Rebellion, an American protest on the tax of whiskey. He was even pardoned by President John Adams. The estate was famous for its role in American history. But overall, the home was famous for his ghostly dwellings and its ghostly reminders. Hear its story. My name is Ellie, and welcome to Tales of Two Cities podcast. Hello? Welcome. This is Tales of Two Cities. The estate was run by Bradford until his death in 1808. After that, his wife became the leader of the estate. In 1817, she handed the managerial work to Clark Woodruff, one of Bradford's former law students, who married Bradford's daughter, Sarah Matilda. The Woodruffs had three children, Cornelia Gale, James, and Mary Octavia. Sarah and her two children shortly died thereafter in 1823 and 1824 of yellow fever. When General Bradford's wife died, Woodruff and his daughter, Mary Octavia, moved to Covington, Louisiana. He sold the plantation and the slaves in 1834 to ruffian Gray Sterling. He remodeled the house doubling the size of the former building and filling the house with furniture from Europe. Then he changed the name of the estate to the Myrtles. Sterling died in 1854, leaving the plantation to his wife. The Myrtles survived the American Civil War, even though it was robbed substantially. In 1865, Drew Winter was hired to manage the plantation. He married one of Sterling's daughters, Sarah, and they had six children, one of whom, Kent Winter, died at the age of three due to typhoid. Afterwards, the family lost its fortune due to it being tied to the Confederate dollar, and Winter was forced to sell the plantation in 1868. He managed to get enough money to procure it two years later. In 1871, William Winter was killed on the porch of the estate by a man named E.S. Weber. Sarah remained on the Myrtles with her mother and siblings until her passing in 1878. Mary Cobb Sterling died in 1880, and the estate was left to her son, Stephen. The plantation, heavily in debt, needed to be sold. 
It was sold in 1886 to Oran D. Brooks, who then sold it in 1891. Eventually, the house ended up in Harrison Milton Williams' hands. In the 1950s, the estate was sold to Marjorie Munson. She was the one that sparked up the talk of the ghost stories. She sold it in the 1970s to James and Francis Kermine Myers, who converted the house into a bed and breakfast. Listed in the National Register of Historic Places, the Myrtles Plantation is still a popular tourist attraction. But it comes with lore. The plantation is supposedly home to at least 12 ghosts. It's also been recorded that 10 murders happened within its walls. In 2001, Unsolved Mysteries filmed a segment about the estate and noted technical difficulties during the production of the segment. The estate's most famous ghost is Chloe. She is reportedly a slave owned by Clark and Sarah Woodruff. The tale of her is this. Clark had forced Chloe to be his mistress. After being caught by Sarah, one of her ears was cut off and she had to wrap her head to hide it. Chloe decided to have her revenge and baked a cake containing the extract of boiled and reduced oleander leaves. Oleander is an extremely poisonous plant. However, her plant backfired and Sarah and her two daughters ate the cake, all dying from the poison. Chloe and the other slaves were hanged for the murder and thrown into the Mississippi River as punishment. However, many state she never left. Many, in fact, many have seen a ghostly woman in a green turban walking around the hallways of the house. Another legend suggests that the house was built on an Indian burial ground. Some have said that they have noticed a Native American woman walking around the grounds as well. Union soldiers have been noted to sit at certain parts of the house, enjoying the atmosphere that isn't there. There is a bloodstain in a doorway, the size of a human body that cannot be cleaned. Also, cleaners have said that mops and brooms cannot go into that space, making it impossible to clean. A mirror located in the house supposedly holds the spirits of Sarah Woodruff and her two children. Following the legend of the poisoning, no one had covered the mirrors when the mother and the two children had died, causing the spirits of the souls to be sucked in the mirror. Handprints can be seen on the mirror, and no amount of Windex can wipe it off. The plantation is also reportedly haunted by a young girl who died in 1868. She appears in the room in which she died and has been noted to practice voodoo on sleeping guests in that room. There is also a ghost that crawls up the stairs and stops on the 17th step. Some suggest that this is William Drew Winter, the murdered victim of the house. He was shot on the French porch, but many believe he staggered or crawled up the stairs and collapsed, dead, on the 17th step. Plantations are filled with a flurry of stories. Most of them are terrible. However, like that Twilight Zone episode I mentioned before, they are needed. They are needed to be a reminder of how terrible we can be. How, if not checked, we can continue an era of awful. The plantation is part of us. It is part of our history. It is a reminder of who we are and why we need to change. That's why the Myrtle Plantation is so haunting. It is a token, a reminder of the evil history we created and what we can revert to. However, the Myrtle Plantation's tour guides are more haunting than what we're used to. That's why it's so scary. The tour guides are those that come from the netherworld. If you enjoyed this episode, please rate, review, and subscribe to us on your podcast device. 
We're also on Spotify and Stitcher, so please join us there too. If you want to have more than just free stuff, check out our Patreon. Nikki and I create special episodes for the one-time fee of $5. We also offer merch, shoutouts, and other deals as well. If you want to represent us, please check out our merch store on Public. We have added more fun things for our relaunch, and we believe that you'll love them. We offer many exclusive Tales of Two Cities items, as well as other items from artists all over the world. If you want to talk, write to us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and our email at Tales of the Number Two Cities Podcast at gmail.com. We love to hear from you, and we generally love telling your stories on our podcast as well. But, and above all, thank you. And please enjoy our marathon of minis.